Well, good morning and welcome to St Andrew's um, Horton Lescan morning prayer. I notice for the very first time there might be some difficulties here with um, the presentation. Um, so please bear with me. Should things happen and uh, disappear, then I will try my hardest to come back to you. So you're welcome here. And we welcome you whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening where you are. Today we'll be using the Worship at Home booklet and also um, some prayers from the Church of England website um, or app and um, the contemporary version. So we'll open as usual with our Nahum 1 verse 7 reading The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. God is closer to those who trust in him. So in preparation we say O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. A prayer of thanksgiving Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to start with our um, Song of Solomon reading, which is um, the Song of Solomon number three, and it's verses one to four. All night long on my bed, I look for the one my heart loves. I look for him but did not find him. I will get up now and go about the city, through its streets and squares. I will search for the one my heart loves. So I look for him but did not find him. The watchmen found me as they made their rounds in the city. Have you seen the one my heart loves? Scarcely had I passed them when I found the one my heart loves. I held him and would not let him go till I brought him to my mother's house to the room of the one who conceived me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just very briefly um, from the Song of Solomon have you seen the one my heart loves? She asked a question and then he was revealed to her. She sought, she didn't find, then she found and held and brought him. So hold him, he's willing, he's not trying to escape. Grasp him by faith, Jesus himself must be held. So move to the psalm reading. This is Psalm 42, verses 1 to 10. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One, 
with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I'll yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me, therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love, at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you look through the psalm, there are numerous questions. When can I go and meet with God? Where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed? And you can go on and look through them all. At this point, David is mourning and David um, is depressed and, um, and, and anxious. All of these questions come up over and over again um, when we are in that position. But if we read through the, through, through the psalm, he does say, with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. That's what he'd found when he was with other people, when he was with others, and they were sharing together. And again, put your hope in God, he says. By the day, the Lord directs his love, and at night his song is with me. So we look to those. If you are feeling it at all in that way, then certainly take your the difficulties and problems to God. Um, and knowing uh, again how God might answer those things by providing um, people to support you on your journey, but bring them all to God. Actually, we'll, we'll say the glory together. I have, have messed that for you. So glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So our next reading is 2 Corinthians, um, chapter 5. I'm hoping that although I can see that my phone, on my phone, the vis I visually are moving around, I'm hoping that the speech hasn't been affected, what you're hearing hasn't been affected. So 2 Corinthians 5. Verses 14 to 17. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. He did, and he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Very briefly, I just want to um, just mention, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, 
the new is here. If you read on a little bit further than what I've read out today um, within that chapter, um, you'll see this is all about the message of reconciliation. So it's all there to, to, um, to see. I don't know whether we will be visiting that again in the, in the very near future. Um, I did underline out of that, verse 20, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So we move to our last reading. Very unusually, that's one of my dogs just getting up and having a little shake. So um, if this is um, John 20, uh, verse 11, oh sorry, verse 1 to 2 first, sorry. And then we're going through to 11 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. We move to verse 11. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I'll get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned around him, turned towards him, and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I've seen the Lord, and he and she told them that that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in reply to um the St John, John reading, I'm going to read from Psalm 30 um, of the beginnings of our prayers. You brought us up, O Lord, from the dead. Lord, you hide your face when we trust in ourselves. Strip us of false security and reclothe us in your praise, that we may know you as the one who raises us from the death, as you raised your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And in the following prayers, you may like to, like to answer, when I call, Lord, receive our prayer, you may like to reply and, to, and hear our prayer. We pray for God's grace. Lord, Receive our prayer and hear our prayer. Lord God, through your grace, we are your people. Through your Son, you have redeemed us. In your Spirit, 
you have made us your own. We pray for St Andrew's and our extended church family. Make our hearts respond to your love. Lord, receive our prayer and hear our prayer. We pray for the world. Make our lives bear witness to your glory in the world. Lord, receive our prayer and hear our prayer. We pray for those that are sick and in need. Make our wills eager to obey and our hands ready to heal, Lord. Receive our praise and hear our prayer. We give you thanks for all those making the lives of others better, Lord, by their daily and their extraordinary deeds. Make our voices one with all, your people in heaven and on earth. And we pray for those in our prayer sheet, Lord, the ones that are known to us. We pray for the St Andrew's Church family as mentioned, if there's anyone there that you know um, receives our prayer throughout the day, please feel free to pop that name um, into the comments um, and we can all um, as one pray for them. There may be things on your mind that um, you've seen on the local news or on the work on our, our national use news we pray for the countries that are in torment at the moment for those who are in war for those who um, are oppressed search our hearts lord to know what's on our hearts and mind. Again, we pray for those that are sick and grieving. And we name them, Lord. Particularly thinking of those people that are going through chemotherapy at the moment, or are about to, or have had news um, regarding their cancer. Again, Lord, we know there are many illnesses that are affecting everyone's life daily. We pray that they are eased of their pain. So we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we think particularly of Lee and Wendy Morris, who are named in our leaflet and their two children. We pray for those living in Dunrobin Close and all of those that would, would normally attend the Education Village. Again, we ask this in Jesus' name. We now move to the Collect of the Day. Almighty God, whose Son restored Mary Magdalene to health of mind and body and called her to be a witness to his resurrection, forgive our sins and heal us by your grace that we may serve you in the power of his risen life who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the conclusion. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I hope, we, um, hope that you will join us again this, um, this evening uh, at seven o'clock. And again, we will be back again tomorrow morning um, at nine o'clock. So I pray that you have a, um, a blessed day. Um, so take care and see you again soon.